Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube for the latest episode of Broncos Now. As always, I'm your host, Sydney Jones. And coming up on today's episode, the Broncos were back at practice today as they look ahead to their Saturday night matchup in Detroit versus the Lions. We'll hear today from head coach Sean Payton, quarterback Russell Wilson, safety Justin Simmons, and wide receiver Cortland Sutton. All that and more coming up. The Denver Broncos were back on the practice field today as they prepare for their road trip to Detroit. Quarterback Russell Wilson and safety Justin Simmons talked today about being back in a prime time and the opportunity that brings. I think the thing about prime time games and listen that every game should feel like a prime time game. You know, if you have that mentality, I think, you know, whether the uh, whether if it's a night during the day, uh, doesn't matter where we play it. Uh, doesn't matter if it's in the parking lot. You know, I just want to have the ball and let's, let's play and, and, and uh, kick the ball off and play some good football. I think the best thing that we can do is focus on each other, um, focus on what we've been doing really, really well. Um, and then I think ultimately, too, embrace the moment. Don't run from it. You know, don't run from it. You know, and, you know, if you want to be the best one day and you want to win a world championship and multiple championships, you're going to play on, you know, play with some lights on and cameras around and people on the sidelines and everything like that. So get used to it. And, uh, I think um, you know, we'll, we'll be ready. We'll be ready to go. No, it's huge. I think, uh, man, I mean, it's why you play the game. You want to play in the big time games. And, um, you know, like, I think I said this a while ago. Um, I know Dame, Damian Lillard said it, but, uh, you know, and, and Pat did too. You know, pressure is privilege. And uh, there's, an, you know, there's something great about having the opportunity to go up against you know, the, the best teams in this league. And everyone knows week in and week out, um, you know, it's the NFL, you're susceptible to lose to any team. And so, um, you know, for us to go down to Detroit, you know, a team that has been on a crazy streak, um, you know, dating back to halfway through last year's season, uh, it's going to be a great test for us, especially a hostile environment going into Detroit, trying to find a way to win a ball game there. You know, we talked about it the last two weeks playing road games. We're going to have to pack our defense and we're going to have to find a way to continue to keep generating takeaways. And head coach Sean Payne also met the media today and talked about where he feels like the team is at right now. I think we're still improving. I think we're still improving. I don't think there's this, this is the plateau we're at. I mean, I think, you know, we've got to win these work days. We've got to win today and tomorrow. Um, and Knowing that this, you know, this last quarter poll, there's a lot at stake. And so, you know, here's a Saturday night game. And we're in the entertainment business, you know, and if you're playing well, you're going to find yourself on Monday nights and Sunday nights and Thursday nights. And, and, and if you're not, you're going to be at 225 Denver time or 12 noon, you know, on the East Coast. And so um, the recovery, the rest, all of those things are important in this stretch. But I do think that, you know, when you put the tape on, there, it's, you're, you're searching still for that Shangri-La game, if you will. And looking ahead to Saturday night's matchup, head coach Sean Payton talked today about the Lions defense and his relationship with Lions head coach Dan Campbell. So there's a lot of what we did in New Orleans, and then there's, he's put his, his own twist on a number of things. Um, they're going to play man-to-man -man coverage. They're going to we're going to do third down tonight. Um, they do a good job mixing up the zone pressures. Um, he's done a great job of taking his talent and then putting together the defense that fits it. They've had some injuries. You know, Chauncey's out now, so they're playing the rookie from Alabama branch at nickel, and and they give you pressure looks that are challenging. Um, a lot of single safety zone, but man-to-man, -man, they'll play some two deep shell. Um, but it's, it's not just the scheme, it's how they play. They play hard, and, uh, and, and that's how Aaron was. I mean, you know, Aaron played 15, 16 years in the, in, in the league, and, and in order to do that, you know, um, he, was, he was something. And on the other side of the ball, safety Justin Simmons talked about Detroit's run game and their offense overall. They, it's a big challenge, and obviously we know that uh, they have a, a plethora of weapons, but uh, their run game is really explosive. And um, you know, first things for us, if you, you know we can't find a way to generate ways to stop the run, um, you know, we're going to stand no chance in, in the pass game. Um, you know, once an offense is able to run the football, they kind of dictate uh, tempo and what they want to do. And so for us, man, we got to make sure that we commit to 
doing a good job of stopping the run and then obviously eliminating the explosives. I think they're a you know, top five offense in explosive plays and that's both in run and pass. And so we need to just do a good job. Um, like I say, week in and week out, I know I sound like a broken record, but we just need to do a good job communication wise and uh, making sure that we fit the run when we need to, but also having good eyes in the pass game so that we eliminate explosives and give ourselves a chance. Plus, we also heard from wide receiver Cortland Sutton as he talked about his season so far in the insane catches that he's made this year. Just throughout practice, um, you know, situations, we always try to, you know, practice to a level of how we want to compete. And, you know, um, our, I think I've talked highly of our scout team. Our scout team gives us great looks and great opportunities to be able to go out and make some of our practice plays, you know, as game-like as possible so that, you know, we get in those situations in the game. It's not a – it becomes an afterthought. It's just something that just, you know, it happens because we've seen it before. Russell Wilson added to that talking about how impressed he's been with Cortland this season. Oh, yeah, man. Cortland's been special all year. Uh, he's been working at it every day. He's such a tremendous talent, great leader, great teammate, great friend. Uh, I mean, just – I mean, I, I can't – you draw up a player in terms of a guy, a guy in terms of character, work ethic, ability, he's it. You know, he's just, um, he's tremendous. Um, and uh, we're only getting better. In tight end, Greg Dulcich returned to practice today. Both head coach Sean Payton and uh, Cortland Sutton talked about what it will mean to get him back. It's, I think it's good. Obviously, um, you know, he's like the the last player really that, that can come up, you know, and, and he gives us uh, – speed, you know, an element that's uniquely different. And and quite honestly, you know, our, our young guy, Lucas, is is, is really uh, doing a good job with, with a similar type of role, if you will. Um, but it'll be, it was good to have him out there today. And uh, um, it certainly will, will help. Man, Doce and Gabbana, man. I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited to, I'm excited to, man, get him back. You know, the, the, the dudes, you know, had to fight a lot of adversity. And, um, you know, it's, it's been really unfortunate. But, you know, to be able to get him back is going to be amazing. I don't think a lot of, a lot of people really understand, you know, the, the level of just excitement that he brings to the game, you know, from that tight end position. You know, the dude can do it all. He'll block up if he needs to. He can run every route, run away from anybody if he, you know, creates mismatches um, in, the, in the passing game. You know, I'm excited to get him back. You know, he's been working his butt off to be able to get back in the, the space that he's in. You know, I'm, I'm sure you already know, you know, him being out is the time that he has been out. You know, he's been working his butt off. And it was cool seeing him at practice today, getting out there, moving around again. You know, it's going to be even better, you know, once we get him back active and get him back on the field. I think he brings just a, a whole different level of uh, game plan for defenses. You know, they, they have to account for him. If you don't account for him and you try to leave him matched up with linebackers and safeties, it's not going to be a pretty day. So I'm excited to get Doce back, man. It's going to be fun. Now it's time to take a look at today's injury report. Outside linebacker Nick Bonito, safety PJ Locke, and running back Samaj P. Ryan all did not participate in today's practice. Meanwhile, outside linebacker Jonathan Cooper was limited, and tight end Greg Dulcich and guard Quinn Miners were full participants. Now joining me here in the Broncos podcast studio for a more in-depth look at today's news is a fellow team reporter, Phil Milani. Phil, thanks for joining me today hey, on our it's Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. I love it. We're in routine. We are. Phil, the Broncos, they're back in primetime this weekend. This is going to be a big one with the Lions sitting at yeah. nine and four. No, this is, I mean, this is now officially the home stretch here. Yeah. The Broncos are right in the thick of it. It seems like almost every team is seven and six in the I AFC. Know. And it's so crazy. each one of these uh, is going to be, you know, For crucial sure. uh, that the Broncos can get find a way to, to get a win. It's the third game in a row on the road. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, nice to see that come to an end. But that it's been a long couple of weeks here. So, it really um, has. But, uh, yeah, looking forward to Saturday night. Me too. Must win game, like you said. Yeah. Phil, you know, there's a lot of connections between these two teams. I know head yeah. coach Sean Payton, he's talked a lot about Dan Campbell and how, you know, he was there when he was drafted. He brought him on, you know, as a coach, an assistant yeah. coach. So a lot of connections there. Interesting to hear yeah. about. Very familiar with, the, yeah. you know, the coaching staff over there. And uh, Sean Payton said, look, when I see the tape of the Lions, I see a team that's really taken on their head coach's personality. Yeah. And, you know, if you saw Hard Knocks a couple of years ago at the Detroit, you mm -hmm. know, you know that what kind of, uh, you know, passionate kind of coach uh, Dan Campbell yeah. is. You know, he does the push-ups while the team is <laughs> stretching and getting ready for training camp. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, he's really done a great job there 
turning things around. Yeah. You know, for so long, the Lions uh, hadn't had a lot of success. And then last year, they went through that turnaround process, almost made the playoffs last year, started this season really hot. Uh, they played on that opening Thursday night game and went to Kansas City and beat the Chiefs. So mm -hmm. uh, this team is a, it's a really talented team. Started the season very hot, but they've dropped two out of three here. So, right. um, you know, if you uh, read the clips coming out of Detroit, they're saying, hey, is there something going on here? How, this is a big game for them, too, I guess, is yeah. what I'm trying to say. Is, Absolutely. Uh, this is a you know, the Lions are trying to win the division for the first time in uh, 30 a years. Long time, yeah. You know, the early 90s was the last time they won the wow. division. So um, they're, they're going through some things. The Broncos, uh, Sean Payton was asked, hey do you think that this team still has room for improvement and mm -hmm. he said yeah oh yeah you know every week we're trying to improve on things and pay attention to the details so uh this is a big game for both teams and uh both teams are the familiar with their coaching staff yeah. uh even dan campbell was asked this week hey what do you think it's going to be like going up against sean mm -hmm. and he was like i know what sean's all about they're going to try and come in here and try and embarrass us so uh they yeah. they have a healthy rivalry yeah. yeah i think going on i love it yeah phil you mentioned how the lions started last year you know got off to a slow start and given how the broncos started this year going one and five uh, Mike McGlinchey said in the locker room today that head coach Sean Payton, he talked you, to the team lot, about yeah. that early on this year and was like, hey, look at how the Lions turn things around. Yeah, that was a good mold, I think, for yeah. the Broncos. A, a good example there to just say, hey, keep the faith, mm -hmm. keep uh, playing hard, practicing hard, and, you know, slowly but surely things will turn around. And right. uh, you've seen that take place in Detroit. And it's hard when, to change that culture and change the mindset, change mm -hmm. expectations, you know, to to flip the script, essentially. And uh, uh, the Lions have done a good job of that. And uh, But like I said, th recently this team has gone through some bumps here. Mm -hmm. So they're going to look to try and get back on track a little bit. And uh, the, this Broncos team, I think, uh, similar Similarly, the the hole that they dug themselves at the start of the season, they they are like we've worked too hard to go back to that. So like, uh, they, they're in a similar spot still, you know, where they're like, look, we don't want to go back to that. We don't want to do a thing mm -hmm. where we win one week, lose one week, win. You know, they want right. to stack these, these and uh, and they know what uh, kind of opportunity they have ahead of them. Absolutely. Yeah, Phil, there was a lot of talk today about Russell Wilson and Cortland Sutton, too, and their chemistry this year, which has been so fun to watch just really develop over the few weeks. And I know Cortland Sutton, he was asked today about, you know, what his favorite catch has been this year since he's made so many insane ones. And oh, my gosh. He was like, it hasn't <laughs> happened yet. Yeah. It's I coming mean, these still. Guys are, yeah, it's their favorite catch is the next catch, yeah. right? Uh, but, yeah, Cortland Sutton has been amazing. Amazing. Every single week he's making one of these insane right. by the sideline. You know, he's got such a great knack for his positioning. He knows he right where the sideline is. He knows how to high point the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, Champagne was saying, like, uh, in the red zone last week, they were trying to get a matchup where, you know, maybe Sun could high point a ball uh, they weren't able to get that but um you know they're always looking to take advantage of sudden size mm -hmm. and um yeah and then russell wilson i thought it was interesting talking about how uh you know of course uh, him and sierra had a baby yes congratulations <laughs> to them yes and russ w was asked hey what if it was going to come a little <laughs> bit earlier? What would you have done? And he said, well, we've got winning to do. I would have been at the game. Yeah. So I was like, ooh, <laughs> don't go well, home. <laughs> yeah. Glad they had the baby afterwards yes, and everyone yes, is healthy and good, right. though. Yes. No, that's very exciting for them. Definitely. Also, Ben Powers, uh, yes. not quite as many followers, but uh, also, uh, <laughs> also had a baby girl. Reportedly had a baby. <laughs> Congratulations to them as well. Yes. Yeah, Phil, you know, Head coach Sean Payne, he talked about this Lions defense and just how physical they are, like you mentioned earlier, some of the characteristics of that unit. So looking at Russ Court, this offense, you know, how do you think they'll fare going up against them? I think that they got to do what they do best. Yes. And to me, that's running the football. Mm -hmm. We saw Javante Williams really get back on track. And, yeah. uh, you know, Samaj Pirine catching those little flip outs, mm -hmm. you know. This is where the Broncos offense really excels. Uh, things near the line of scrimmage and then trying to make plays after. After that and and some of these longer drives I think that's where it starts for this Broncos mm -hmm. offense uh, the 
the screen game, the quick outs to the wide yeah. receivers, those types of things. That's how they sort of establish themselves in these games. And then every now and then they take a shot down the field and, mm-hmm. you know, they they hit uh, Corlin Sutton for that big one, obviously. But I think that's sort of the formula for this Broncos offense. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, um, establishing that ground game early on and, and setting a tone physically, I think that's what this Broncos offense wants to be about. And then scoring touchdowns in the yeah. red zone. That's a big part of what, mm-hmm. what they need to do. And, and they did a good job against the Chargers uh, making these long drives turn into seven points. I think that that's uh, that's sort of the key for this team. Yeah. yeah, and um, I know tight end Greg Dulcich, he returned to practice yeah, today, we'll too. To you know, don't know if he'll play or not, but exciting to get him back in, back at practice. Yes, I think that that is uh, something that this Broncos offense – I don't want to say that they're missing it, but like I mm-hmm. think that uh, Dulcich is sort of a special type of player where he yes. he's got that speed that he's such a weapon that when he's healthy he could be a factor yeah. out there. He's just not been healthy. It feels like, um, mm-hmm. and so you know you've seen Adam Troutman uh, step up, had right. the touchdown. Uh, Luke Scroll mm-hmm. had a, a big play Good in touch. that game, so they've gotten some production there. But I think that heading into the year, we all thought that Dulcich was going to be this sort of joker type of player yeah. uh that sean Good payton point. likes to talk about mm-hmm. and uh him not being out there i think has uh taken away something from where where this offense, offense could have been you know so mm-hmm. uh it, gosh if he could come back and and be out there on the field he just gives this offense another weapon that you know another little wrinkle for sean to use that uh really could be uh something that the broncos benefit from in this four game stretch absolutely and we heard from Cortland sutton earlier in the show he seems juiced that you know dulcich was back at practice he calls him dolce and cabana apparently that's <laughs> yeah. his name well, the Nickname. hair is the very hair nice is you know it's uh you got to do it but uh yeah. yeah i think that they've looked at everything with dulcich yeah. because uh he had never really had hamstring issues before coming to the Mm -hmm. NFL Mm -hmm. and you know sometimes when you come to the NFL you put on this weight try to get stronger try to get bigger you know and maybe your body's not meant to have that Mm -hmm. and so they've been looking at all kinds of different things with Dulcich trying to make sure that there's something that they could do to prevent the hamstring uh, from uh, you know giving him some uh, troubles here so uh, we'll have to see you know how they can a handle Dulcich moving forward because you just don't want this to be a thing that every time he's out there, you're like, right. what's going to happen with his hammy? A hundred percent. Yeah. So. so last one for here, for you here, looking at the matchup, you know, we heard from Justin Simmons earlier today and he talked a lot about the lions run game. Oh, yeah. What have you seen just from their offense that this defense, you know, yeah, David need Montgomery to be on for. and uh, Jameer yeah. Gibbs, Gibbs. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, Gibbs, a lot of people were talking about him coming out uh, last year from Alabama, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, he's made an impact for the Lions. Uh, and so they they like to use both of these guys and they use them a lot. And uh, I think they have like 16 or 17 touchdowns combined this year. Oh. Uh, they both are making impacts, you know, mm-hmm. for this offense. So th- for the Broncos, I think that you still in the back of your mind, as good as this defense has played, you still sort of remember the issues they had stopping the run. So I think it starts there for this Broncos uh, right. uh, defense. defense, you know, hey, Make sure that you stop the run early in this one. Make the Lions pass the ball. Look, Jared Goff is more than capable of Mm -hmm. getting hot, getting in a rhythm, and and making defenses pay. But if you can pressure him like the Broncos have been doing, uh, getting the pressure from all kinds of different areas. Mm -hmm. Six different players had a sack last week. Uh, If you can get after Goff, that's when that Lions offense starts to have some problems. And uh, they'll, they'll turn the ball over. And uh, um, I think that might be the recipe for the defensive side of the ball is make sure you stop the run. Those mm-hmm. two guys are dangerous. Stop the run there and then make it so that Jared Goff is throwing the ball a lot. Then you can get pressure on him and then the takeaways will happen. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, of course, it sounds easy to talk about, yeah. but uh, going out there and doing it is a different deal. But uh, 100%. They're gonna, I think that that's sort of the goal every week for this Broncos defense yeah. is, Make sure you stop the run because that's where so many issues start from the running Mm -hmm. game, you know, and it can kind of snowball. Make sure you just fundamentally sound there and then everything else, all of the uh, talents of this defense can really come alive Alive. when you're, when you're stopping the run. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's a couple more days of practice before the Broncos head out to Detroit. An early one, Saturday. Saturday night game. I know, a little bit. So uh, We'll travel Friday afternoon. Yeah, get get out to Detroit, so. 
Should be yeah. a fun one. That your first game in Detroit, right? Yes, yeah, I have not been so. to Detroit. Yeah, or that's Ford a Field. Ford, Ford Field is a, yeah, it's a good I'm atmosphere in there. So yeah. Appreciate you coming on the show. Fam. Thanks, Ed. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode of Broncos Now. Broncos Country, thanks so much for tuning in. I'll meet you right back here on the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube tomorrow for a game preview. I'll see you all then.